Hello, my dear friends. I am so happy that today we can meet again on day number four of our 10 days of prayer and fasting for the year 2021. What a wonderful way to begin the year. We don't know what's in store for us this year, but we do know that our God is still a prayer answering God and He has already taken the head of the year. And because of that, we can be rest assured in Him. Today's message has been entitled, Putting Reviver into Practice. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for this privilege to be part of the living. As we continue on day number four of our 10 days of prayer, we ask that you speak to us in a very special way. Turn a listening ear to our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. In James chapter 4, Reading from verses 2 and 3, the word of God says, Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasure. This is very interesting. You see, my dear friend, revival begins with prayer. But we do not need to stop there. There are important steps that we need to take in order to put our revival into practice. Sometimes we feel like there is something that is missing, something that we need to spark revival in our lives. So the question that we need to find answers to is, what is missing in our Christian experience? What is it that we are lacking? Well, first of all, there are a few questions that we need to ask in order to find answers to what we are really lacking. Number one, what is the center of all our problems? Is it spiritual? Could our lack of the Holy Spirit lie at the root of our lukewarm Christian experience? If the answer is yes, then why do we lack the Holy Spirit in our lives? The Bible gives us an answer in James chapter 4 verse 2. It says, You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. You see, just as we have learned earlier, God invites us to continually ask for the Holy Spirit in our lives. So the question is, why do we not hunger and test for the gift of the Holy Spirit? Since this is the means by which we are to receive power, why do we not talk of it? Why do we not even pray about it? Why do we not yearn for it? Why is it that all the things that we ask for in our prayers are the things that we want to consume, the things that the world is craving for? Why don't we yearn for the Holy Spirit? Well, the Apostle James suggests something. He says we do not receive when we ask because we ask amiss. Maybe this means that God cannot bless when our minds are set on the things of the flesh. In Romans chapter 8 verse 5 and 6, the Apostle Paul explains that for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so what is, what is the carnal mind? When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verses 14 to 16, and then chapter 3, reading from verses 1 to verse 4, the Apostle Paul categorizes Christians into groups. And that is the natural man. That is the person who lives in the world without a relationship with God. Then also we have the spiritual man. Now the spiritual man is a person who is full, who has a genuine relationship with God. When we are spiritual, we have the mind of Christ according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. So dear friends, we have the natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man, the man who lives in the world. The carnal man has a faint or divided relationship with God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, the apostle Paul says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So the question is, where do you fall? Are you a spiritual man or a natural man? The natural man is the one who has no relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible says, He does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Are you a natural man? Or are you a spiritual man, the one who has a full genuine relationship with God? Or are you a carnal person? When you read 1 Corinthians 3 1, the Bible says, Brethren, Paul calls the natural man brethren, which means, which means you can be in the church and still be carnal if you don't have genuine relationship with God. It is only when you put your revival into action 
that is when your relationship with God becomes genuine. It is only when, when you begin to ask for the Holy Spirit to be the guide of your life. That is when you move from carnal nature to the spiritual nature. Today God is with us. On this fourth day of the ten days of prayer and fasting, God wants to bless you and I. He wants us to switch from that self-centered nature, the carnal person and the natural man, to be the spiritual man. So that he can use you for wonderful things in this life. Remember, where you stand or where you fall according to these categories will determine how successful you will be in this new year that God has blessed us with. Why don't you today make a U-turn now? Why don't you rise and come to him so that he can change you and fill you with the Spirit? If that is your prayer, then today I want to invite you as we pray on God's words for today. First of all, I want us to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct our thought so that our thought will be pure. In Romans 8 verse 5, the Bible says, For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. Shall we pray? Father, we know we are either under the influence of our flesh or under the influence of your spirit. Today we submit our thoughts to you. Please let your spirit direct our thoughts. Make us spiritual Christians and set our minds on the things of the spirit. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Again, I want us to pray and thank God that we are no longer at the mercies of our last. Thank you for taking you from the natural state or the carnal state to the spiritual state. Galatians 5.16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Father, we thank you so much that your spirit breaks the power of sin in our lives. Please help us to grow in you. Help us to walk in the spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. In Jesus' name, Amen. Finally, my dear friends, I want us to pray and ask God's Spirit to deliver us from every form of sinful condemnation. In Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2, God's Word says, Therefore, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Dear Lord, we thank you. What a blessing it is to know that the bondage of sin is broken when we live in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ who has taken away our guilt upon himself and has freed us from sin and death. Help us that from this day onward we will not live under guilt or condemnation because you have already taken them off from us in Jesus name. Amen. May God bless you so much. Remember, we shall send the first prayer request to you at 6 a.m. wherever you are. And then the Zoom line will be opened. You can join anytime. And the pastor will be there to pray with you. 12 p.m. will do the same. And then at 7 p.m., we shall all meet together on Zoom and on Facebook and on YouTube for our live worship with a man of God. God bless you and do have a wonderful day as we continue to pray. Shalom.